One, two, three. So the second step that we need to remember when we're dealing with ventilators is what happens when compliance changes? Now here it's kind of cool because we make the change in compliance so it's very predictable. And so we come over here and we'll show you this device later. But when we come over here, we can adjust compliance on the scale. So we know exactly what the patient's compliance and patient's compliance is. And so therefore we can predict what's going to happen on the ventilator when we change compliance. In the clinical setting, it's not that simple, right? Because it's the patient and their disease process that that uh, changes compliance, not us coming by and manually changing something on a patient. Of course, that would be nice, right? Because we could just make them all compliant and heal them and get them out. But unfortunately, we don't have those magic powers. So let's review really quickly um, what compliance is and what those effects are, right? So the first thing is, right, compliance is just equal to change in volume over change in pressure. Okay, delta, P, delta V over delta P. With a normal being a, a low normal, for an adult, being around 40 mils per, K, uh, per centimeter of water pressure, okay? So, um, so we're getting 40 mils for each one centimeter of water pressure that the patient experiences and is given from the ventilator. Well, what happens if compliance goes down? So if we say, decrease compliance, okay? And on the lab, we might say decrease lung compliance to 20 mils per centimeter of water pressure. So what does that mean? It's harder to ventilate this patient now, right? So we're only gonna get 20 mils for that same one centimeter of water pressure that we had before. So how do we predict what's gonna happen with the vent? Well, let's, let's look at two different scenarios. So the first is volume ventilation. So if we're in volume ventilation, we have our patient set at eight mils per kg of ideal body weight, which happens to correlate to a tidal volume of 425 mils, we have a set volume the patient's gonna get, right? But compliance has gone down. Compliance fell from 40 down to 20. The impact, we're gonna to have to see a major increase in pressure to maintain this volume, right? So the result is the PIP is going to go up a lot. And in fact, the delta P will have to go up by, by double, right? Our compliance went down by half. So in order to maintain that same volume, 425 mils, we're gonna need to double our pressure. So it's predictable. We know as soon as we, we make this change, we know what should happen. So then we go and play with the ventilator and we see that's what happened. If it doesn't, again, that means we messed up, right? The second option, is that we are in pressure ventilation. So now we have the pressure, say, set at, um, uh, let's just say 20. Although, well, we've already used 20 a couple times, so. Yeah, we've used it up here. So let's say our, our, our pressure was set at 18. So now we guarantee that much pressure, and we set it for to deliver eight mils per kg still, so the patient's tidal volume was 425 mils initially. But what happens when we get this change in compliance? Well, pressure set, so we're still gonna maintain only 18 mils per k, uh, sorry, 18 centimeters of water pressure, but what's going to happen? Compliance goes down from 40 to 20, and our pressure is still the same, so tidal volume will actually half. It'll go down by half to 212.5. So this change from 40 to 20 centimeter of water pre uh, mils per centimeter of water pressure ends up reducing our tidal volume by half. 
So how do we solve it? Well, of course, we turn up our pressure or decide we want a lower tidal volume. But that concept is predictable and happens every time.